Emerald Tablets of Thoth, The Atlantean. Translation and Interpretation by Doriel. Introduction to the Original Work by Doriel. In the following pages, I will reveal some of the mysteries which as yet have only been touched upon lightly either by myself or other teachers or students of truth. Man's search for understanding of the laws which regulate his life has been unending, yet always just beyond the veil which shields the higher planes from material man's vision, the truth has existed, ready to be assimilated by those who enlarge their vision by turning inward, not outward, in their search. In the silence of material senses lies the key to the unveiling of wisdom. He who talks does not know. He who knows does not talk. The highest knowledge is unutterable, for it exists as an entity in lanes which transcend all material words or symbols. All symbols are but keys to doors leading to truths, and many times the door is not opened because the key seems so great that the things which are beyond it are not visible. If we can understand that all keys, all material symbols are manifestations, are but extensions of a great law and truth, we will begin to develop the vision which will enable us to penetrate beyond the veil. All things, in all universes, move according to law, and the law which regulates the movement of the planets is no more immutable than the law which regulates the material expressions of man. One of the greatest of all cosmic laws is that which is responsible for the formation of man as a material being. The great aim of the mystery schools of all ages has been to reveal the workings of the law which connect man, the material, and man, the spiritual. The connecting link between the material man and spiritual man is the intellectual man, for the mind partakes of both the material and immaterial qualities. The aspirant for higher knowledge must develop the intellectual side of his nature, and so strengthen his will that is able to concentrate all powers of his being on and in the plane he desires. The great search for light, life, and love only begins on the material plane. Carried to its ultimate, its final goal is complete oneness with the universal consciousness. The foundation in the material is the first step. Then comes the higher goal of spiritual attainment. In the following pages, I will give an interpretation of the Emerald Tablets and their secret, hidden and esoteric meanings. Concealed in the words of Thoth are many meanings that do not appear on the surface. Light of knowledge brought to bear upon the tablets will open many new fields for thought. Read and be wise, but only if the light of your own consciousness awakens the deep-seated understanding which is an inherent quality of the soul. In the Threefold Light, Doriel. Preface to the Emerald Tablets of Thought, the Atlantean. The history of the tablets translated in the following pages is strange and beyond the belief of modern scientists. Their antiquity is stupendous, dating back some 36,000 years BC. The writer is Thoth, an Atlantean priest king, who founded a colony in ancient Egypt after the sinking of the mother country. He was the builder of the great Pyramid of Giza, erroneously attributed to Cheops, see the Great Pyramid by Doriel. In it, he incorporated his knowledge of the ancient wisdom and also securely secreted records and instruments of ancient Atlantis. For some 16,000 years, he ruled the ancient race of Egypt from approximately 50,000 BC to 36,000 BC. At that time, the ancient barbarous race among which he and his followers had settled had been raised to a high degree of civilization. Thoth was an immortal, that is, he had conquered death, passing 
only when he willed, and even then not through death. His vast wisdom made him ruler over the various Atlantean colonies, including the ones in South and Central America. When the time came for him to leave Egypt, he erected the Great Pyramid over the entrance to the Great Halls of Amenti, placed in it his records, and appointed guards for his secrets among the highest of his people. In later times, the descendants of these guards became the Pyramid Priests, by which Thoth was deified as the God of Wisdom, the Recorder, by those in the Age of Darkness which followed his passing. In legend, the Halls of Amenti became the Underworld, the Halls of the Gods where the soul passed after death for judgment. During later ages, the ego of Thoth passed into the bodies of men in the manner described in the tablets. As such, he incarnated three times in his last being known as Hermes, the thrice born. In this incarnation, he left the writings known to modern occultists as the Emerald Tablets, a later and far lesser exposition of the ancient mysteries. The tablets translated in this work are ten, which were left in the Great Pyramid in the custody of the Pyramid Priests. The ten are divided into thirteen parts for the sake of convenience. The last two are so great and far-reaching in their import that at present it is forbidden to release them to the world at large. However, in those contained herein are secrets which will prove of inestimable value to the serious student. They should be read, not once, but a hundred times, for only thus can the true meaning be revealed. A casual reading will give glimpses of beauty, but more intensive study will open avenues of wisdom to the seeker. But now a word as to how these mighty secrets came to be revealed to modern man after being hidden so long. Some 1300 years BC, Egypt, the ancient Chem, was in turmoil and many delegations of priests were sent to other parts of the world. Among these were some of the pyramid priests who carried with them the emerald tablets as a talisman by which they could exercise authority over the less advanced priestcraft of races descended from other Atlantean colonies. The tablets were understood from legend to give the bearer authority from thought. The particular group of priests bearing the tablets emigrated to South America, where they found a flourishing race, the Mayas, who remembered much of the ancient wisdom. Among these, the priests settled and remained. In the 10th century, the Mayas had thoroughly settled the Yucatan, and the tablets were placed beneath the altar of one of the great temples of the sun god. After the conquest of the Mayas by the Spaniards, the cities were abandoned and the treasures of the temples forgotten. It should be understood that the Great Pyramid of Egypt has been, and still is, a temple of initiation into the mysteries. Jesus, Solomon, Apollonius, and others were initiated there. The writer, who has a connection with the Great White Lodge, which also works through the Pyramid Priesthood, was instructed to recover and return to the Great Pyramid the ancient tablets. This after adventures which need not be detailed here, was accomplished. Before returning them, he was given permission to translate and retain a copy of the wisdom engraved on the tablets. This was done in 1925, and only now has permission been given for part to be published. It is expected that many will scoff, yet the true student will read between the lines and gain wisdom. If the light is in you, the light which is engraved in these tablets will respond. Now, a word as to the material aspect of the tablets. They consist of twelve tablets of emerald green, formed from a substance created through alchemical transmutation. They are imperishable, resistant to all elements and substances. In effect, the atomic and cellular structure is fixed, no change ever taking place. In this respect, they violate the material law of ionization. Upon them are engraved characters in the ancient Atlantean language, characters which respond to attuned thought waves, releasing their associated mental vibration in the mind of the reader. 
The tablets are fastened together with hoops of golden-colored alloy suspended from a rod of the same material. So much for the material appearance. The wisdom contained therein is the foundation of the ancient mysteries, and for the one who reads them with open eyes and mind, his wisdom shall be increased a hundredfold. Read, believe or not, but read, and the vibration found therein will awaken a response in your soul. In cosmic harmony, Doriel, supreme voice of the Brotherhood. Emerald Tablet 1 The History of Thoth the Atlantean I, Thoth the Atlantean, Master of Mysteries, Keeper of Records, Mighty King, Magician, Living from generation to generation, being about to pass into the halls of Amenti, set down for the guidance of those that are to come after, these records of the mighty wisdom of great Atlantis. In the great city of Kior, on the island of Undal, in a time far past, I began this incarnation, not as the little men of the present age did the mighty ones of Atlantis live and die, but rather from aeon to aeon did they renew their life in the halls of Amenti, where the river of life flows eternally onward. A hundred times ten I have descended the dark way that led into the light, and as many times have I ascended from the darkness into the light, my strength and power renewed. Now for a time I descend, and the men of Chem shall know me no more. But in a time yet unborn I will rise again, mighty and potent, requiring an accounting of those left behind me. Then beware, O men of Chem, if ye have falsely betrayed my teaching, for I shall cast ye down from your high estate into the darkness of the caves from whence ye came. Betray not my secrets to the men of the north, or the men of the south, lest my curse fall upon ye. Remember and heed my words, for surely will I return again and require of thee that which ye guard. I, even from beyond time and from beyond death, will I return, rewarding or punishing as ye have requited your trust. Great were my people in the ancient days, great beyond the conception of the little people, now around me. Knowing the wisdom of old, seeking far within the heart of infinity knowledge that belonged to earth's youth. Wise were we with the wisdom of the children of light who dwelt among us. Strong were we with the power drawn from the eternal fire. And of all these, greatest among the children of men was my father, Thotme, keeper of the great temple, link between the children of light who dwelt within the temple and the races of men who inhabited the ten islands. Mouthpiece, after the three, of the dweller of Unal, speaking to the kings with the voice that must be obeyed. Grew I there from a child into manhood, being taught by my father the elder mysteries, until in time there grew within the fire of wisdom, until it burst into a consuming flame. Not desired I but the attainment of wisdom, until on a great day the command came from the dweller of the temple that I be brought before him. Few there were among the children of men who had looked upon that mighty face and lived, for not as the sons of men are the children of light when they are not incarnate in a physical body. Chosen was I from the sons of men, taught by the dweller so that his purposes might be fulfilled purposes yet unborn in the womb of time. Long ages I dwelt in the temple, learning ever and yet ever more wisdom, until I, too, approached the light emitted from the great fire. Taught me he, the path to Amenti, the underworld where the great king sits upon his throne of might. Deep I bowed in homage before the lords of life and the lords of death, receiving as my gift the key of life. Free was I of the halls of Amenti, bound not by death to the circle of life. Far to the stars I journeyed until space and time became as naught. Then, having drunk deep of the cup of wisdom, 
I looked into the hearts of men, and there found I greater mysteries, and was glad. For only in the search for truth could my soul be stilled, and the flame within be quenched. Down through the ages I lived, seeing those around me taste the cup of death and return again in the light of life. Gradually, from the kingdoms of Atlantis, passed waves of consciousness that had been one with me, only to be replaced by spawn of a lower star. In obedience to the law, the word of the Master grew into flower. Downward, into darkness, turned the thoughts of the Atlanteans, until at last in his wrath arose from his Aguanti, the dweller. This word has no English equivalent. It means a state of detachment. Speaking the word, calling the power, deep in the earth's heart, the sons of Amenti heard, and hearing, directed the changing of the flower of fire that burns eternally, changing and shifting, using the logos, until that great fire changed its direction. Over the world then broke the great waters, drowning and sinking, changing earth's balance until only the temple of light was left standing on the great mountain of Undal, still rising out of the water. Some there were who were living, saved from the rush of the fountains. Called to me then the master, saying, Gather ye together my people, take them by the arts ye have learned afar across the waters, until ye reach the land of the hairy barbarians, dwelling in caves of the desert. Follow there the plan that ye know of. Gathered I then my people, and entered the great ship of the Master. Upward we rose into the morning, dark beneath us lay the temple. Suddenly over it rose the waters, vanished from earth until the time appointed was the great temple. Fast we fled toward the sun of the morning, until beneath us lay the land of the children of Chem. Raging, they came with cudgels and spears, lifted in anger, seeking to slay and utterly destroy the sons of Atlantis. Then raised I my staff, and directed a ray of vibration, striking them still in their tracks as fragments of stone of the mountain. Then spoke I to them in words calm and peaceful, telling them of the might of Atlantis, saying we were children of the sun and its messengers. Cowed I them by my display of magic science, until at my feet they groveled when I released them. Long dwelt we in the land of Chem, long and yet long again, until obeying the commands of the Master, who, while sleeping, yet lives eternally. I sent from me the sons of Atlantis, sent them in many directions, that from the womb of time wisdom might rise again in her children. Long time dwelt I in the land of Chem, doing great works by the wisdom within me. Upward grew into the light of knowledge the children of Chem, watered by the rains of my wisdom. Blasted I then a path to Amenti, so that I might retain my powers, living from age to age a son of Atlantis, keeping the wisdom, preserving the records. Great grew the sons of Chem, conquering the people around them, growing slowly upwards in soul force. Now for a time, I go from among them into the dark halls of Amenti, deep in the halls of the earth, before the lords of the powers, face to face once again with the dweller. Raised I high over the entrance, a doorway, a gateway leading down to Amenti. Few there would be with courage to dare it, few pass the portal to dark Amenti. Raised over the passage, I, a mighty pyramid, using the power that overcomes earth force, gravity. Deep and yet deeper, placed I a force house or chamber. From it carved I a circular passage reaching almost to the great summit. There in the apex set I the crystal, sending the ray into the time-space, drawing the force from out of the ether, concentrating upon the gateway to Amenti. 
see The Great Pyramid by Doriel. Other chambers I built and left vacant to all seeming, yet hidden within them are the keys to Amenti. He who in courage would dare the dark realms, let him be purified first by long fasting. Lie in the sarcophagus of stone in my chamber, then to reveal I to him the great mysteries. Soon shall he follow to where I shall meet him, even in the darkness of earth shall I meet him. I, Thoth, Lord of Wisdom, meet him and hold him and dwell with him always. Built I the great pyramid, patterned after the pyramid of earth force, burning eternally so that it too might retain through the ages. In it, I built my knowledge of magic science so that it might be here when again I return from Amenti. I, while I sleep in the halls of Amenti, my soul roaming free will incarnate, dwell among men in this form or another. Hermes Thriceborn Emissary on earth am I of the dweller, fulfilling his commands so man might be lifted. Now return I to the halls of Amenti, leaving behind me some of my wisdom. Preserve ye and keep ye the command of the dweller. Lift ever upwards your eyes to the light. Surely in time ye are one with the Master. Surely by right ye are one with the Master. Surely by right ye are one with the All. Now I depart from ye. Know my commandments. Keep them and be them, and I will be with you, helping and guiding you into the light. Now before me opens the portal, go I down into the darkness of night. Emerald Tablet 2 The Halls of Amenti Deep in the earth's heart lie the halls of Amenti, far beneath the islands of sunken Atlantis, halls of the dead and halls of the living, bathed in the fire of the infinite all. Far in a past time, lost in the space-time, the children of light look down on the world, see the children of men in their bondage, bound by the force that came from beyond, knew they that only by freedom from bondage could man ever rise from the earth to the sun. Down they descended and created bodies, taking the semblance of men as their own. The masters of everything said after their forming, We are they who were formed from the space dust, partaking of life from the infinite all, living in the world as children of men, like and yet unlike the children of men. Then for a dwelling place, far beneath the earth crust, blasted great spaces they, by their power, spaces apart from the children of men, surrounded them by forces and power, shielded from harm, they the halls of the dead. Side by side then, placed they, other spaces, filled them with life and with light from above, Builded they then the halls of Amenti, that they might dwell eternally there, living with life to eternity's end. Thirty and two were there of the children, sons of light who had come among men, seeking to free from the bondage of darkness those who were bound by the force from beyond. Deep in the halls of life grew a flower, flaming, expanding, driving backward the night. Placed in the center, a ray of great potence, life-giving, light-giving, filling with power all who came near it. Placed they around it thrones, two and thirty, places for each of the children of light, placed so that they were bathed in the radiance, filled with the life from the eternal light. There time after time placed they their first created bodies, so that they might be filled with the spirit of life. One hundred years out of each thousand must the life-giving light flame forth on their bodies, quickening, awakening the spirit of life. There in the circle from aeon to aeon sit the great masters, 
living a life not known among men. There, in the halls of life, they lie sleeping. Free flows their soul through the bodies of men. Time after time, while their bodies lie sleeping, incarnate they in the bodies of men, teaching and guiding onward and upward, out of the darkness into the light. There, in the hall of life, filled with their wisdom, known not to the races of man, living forever beneath the cold fire of life, sit the children of light. Times there are when they awaken, come from the depths, to be lights among men, infinite they among finite. He who, by progress, has grown from the darkness, lifted himself from the night into light, free is he made of the halls of Amenti, free of the flower of light and of life. Guided he then, by wisdom and knowledge, passes from man to the master of life. There he may dwell as one with the masters, free from the bonds of the darkness of night. Seated within the flower of radiance sit seven lords from the space-time above us, helping and guiding through infinite wisdom the pathway through the time of the children of men. Mighty and strange they, veiled with their power, silent all-knowing, drawing the life force, different yet one with the children of men. I, different and yet one with the children of light. Custodians and watchers of the force of man's bondage, ready to loose when the light has been reached. First and most mighty sits the veiled presence, Lord of Lords, the infinite nine, over the others from each cosmic cycle, weighing and watching the progress of men. Under he sit the lords of the cycles, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, each with his mission, each with his power, guiding, directing the destiny of man. There sit they, mighty and potent, free of all time and space, not of this world, they, yet akin to it, elder brothers they, of the children of men. Judging and weighing, they with their wisdom, watching the progress light among men. There before them was I led by the dweller, watched him blend with one from above. Then from he came forth a voice saying, Great art thou, Thoth, among children of men. Free henceforth of the halls of Amenti, master of life among children of men. Taste not of death except as thou will it, Drink thou of life to eternity's end. Henceforth forever is life, thine for the taking. Henceforth is death at the call of thy hand. Dwell here or leave here when thou desireth. Free is Amenti to the son of man. Take thou up life in what form thou desireth, children of the light that has grown among men. Choose thou thy work, for all souls must labor. Never be free from the pathway of light. One step thou hast gained on the long pathway upward, infinite now is the mountain of light. Each step thou taketh but heightens the mountain. All of thy progress but lengthens the goal. Approach ye ever the infinite wisdom, ever before thee recedes the goal. Free are ye, made now of the halls of Amenti, to walk hand in hand with the lords of the world, one in one purpose, working together, bringers of light to the children of men. Then from his throne came one of the masters, taking my hand and leading me onward, through all the halls of the deep hidden land. Led he me through the halls of Amenti, showing the mysteries that are known not to man. Through the dark passage, downward he led me into the hall where sits the dark death. Vast as space lay the great hall before me, walled by darkness but yet filled with light. Before me arose a great throne of darkness, 
veiled on it, seated a figure of night. Darker than darkness sat the great figure, dark with a darkness not of the night. Before it then paused the master, speaking the word that brings about life, saying, O master of darkness, guide of the way from life unto life, before thee I bring a son of the morning. Touch him not ever with the power of night. Call not his flame to the darkness of night. Know him and see him, one of our brothers, lifted from darkness into the night. Know him and see him, one of our brothers, lifted from darkness into the light. Release thou his flame from its bondage. Free, let it flame through the darkness of night. Raised then the hand of the figure, forth came a flame that grew clear and bright. Rolled back swiftly the curtain of darkness, unveiled the hall from the darkness of night. Then grew in the great space before me, flame after flame, from the veil of the night. Uncounted millions leaped they before me, some flaming forth as flowers of fire. Others there were that shed a dim radiance, glowing but faintly from out of the night. Some there were that faded swiftly, others that grew from a small spark of light, each surrounded by its dim veil of darkness, yet flaming with the light that could never be quenched, coming and going like fireflies in springtime, filled they the space with light and with life. Then spoke a voice, mighty and solemn, saying, These are lights that are souls among men, growing and fading, existing forever, changing yet living through death into life. When they have bloomed into flower, reached the zenith of growth in their life, swiftly then send I my veil of darkness, shrouding and changing to new forms of life. Steadily upward throughout the ages, growing, expanding, into yet greater flame, lighting the darkness with yet greater power, quenched yet unquenched by the veil of the night. So grows the soul of man ever upward, quenched yet unquenched by the darkness of night. I, death, come, and yet I remain not, for the life eternal exists in the all. Only an obstacle, I, in the pathway, quick to be conquered by the infinite light. Awaken, O flame that burns ever inward. Flame forth and conquer the veil of the night. Then in the midst of the flames in the darkness grew, there one that drove forth the night, flaming, expanding, ever brighter, until at last it was nothing but light. Then spoke my guide, the voice of the Master, See your own soul as it grows in the light, free now forever from the Lord of the night. Forward he led me through many great spaces, filled with the mysteries of the children of light, mysteries that man may never yet know of until he too is a son of the light. Backward then he led me into the light of the hall of the light, Knelt I then before the great masters, Lord of all, from the cycles above. Spoke he then with words of great power, saying, Thou hast been made free of the halls of Amenti. Choose thou thy work among the children of men. Then spoke I, O great master, let me be a teacher of men, leading them onward and upward, until they too are lights among men, freed from the veil of the night that surrounds them, flaming with light that shall shine among men. Spoke to me then the voice, Go as ye will, so be it decreed, Master, are ye of your destiny, free to take or reject at will. Take ye the power, take ye the wisdom, shine as a light among the children of men. Upward then, led me the dweller, dwelt I again among children of men, 
teaching and showing some of my wisdom, son of the light, a fire among men. Now again I tread the path downward, seeking the light in the darkness of night. Hold ye and keep ye, preserve my record. Guide shall it be to the children of men. Emerald Tablet 3 The Key of Wisdom I, thought the Atlantean, give of my wisdom, give of my knowledge, give of my power. Freely I give to the children of men, give that they, too, might have wisdom to shine through the world from the veil of the night. Wisdom is power, and power is wisdom, one with each other, perfecting the whole. Be thou not proud, O man, in thy wisdom. Discourse with the ignorant as well as the wise. If one comes to thee full of knowledge, listen and heed, for wisdom is all. Keep thou not silent when evil is spoken for truth, like the sunlight shines above all. He who oversteppeth the law shall be punished, for only through law comes the freedom of men. Cause thou not fear, for fear is a bondage, a fetter that binds the darkness to men. Follow thine heart during thy lifetime. Do thou more than is commanded of thee. When thou hast gained riches, follow thou thine heart, for all these are of no avail if thine heart be weary. Diminish thou not the time of following thine heart. It is abhorred of the soul. They that are guided go not astray, but they that are lost cannot find a straight path. If thou go among men, make for thyself love, the beginning and end of the heart. If one cometh unto thee for counsel, let him speak freely, that the thing for which he hath come to thee may be done. If he hesitates to open his heart to thee, it is because thou, the judge, doeth wrong. Repeat thou not extravagant speech, neither listen thou to it, for it is the utterance of one not in equilibrium. Speak thou not of it, so that he before thee may know wisdom. Silence is of great profit. An abundance of speech profiteth nothing. Exalt not thine heart above the children of men, lest it be brought lower than the dust. If thou be great among men, be honored for knowledge and gentleness. If thou seeketh to know the nature of a friend, ask not his companion, but pass a time alone with him. Debate with him, testing his heart by his words and his bearing. That which goeth into the storehouse must come forth, and the things that are thine must be shared with a friend. Knowledge is regarded by the fool as ignorance, and the things that are profitable are to him hurtful. He liveth in death. It is therefore his food. The wise man lets his heart overflow, but keeps silent his mouth. O man, list to the voice of wisdom, list to the voice of light. Mysteries there are in the cosmos that unveiled fill the world with their light. Let he who would be free from the bonds of darkness first divine the material from the immaterial, the fire from the earth. For know ye that as earth descends to earth, so also fire ascends unto fire and becomes one with fire. He who knows the fire that is within himself shall ascend unto the eternal fire and dwell in it eternally. Fire, the inner fire, is the most potent of all force, for it overcometh all things and penetrates to all things of the earth. Man supports himself only on that which resists. So earth must resist man, else he existeth not. All eyes do not see with the same vision, for to one an object appears of one form and color, and to a different eye of another. So also the infinite fire, changing from color to color, is never the same from day to day. Thus speak I, Thoth, of my wisdom, for a man is a fire burning bright through the night. 
never is quenched in the veil of the darkness, never is quenched by the veil of the night. Into men's hearts I looked by my wisdom, found them not free from the bondage of strife. Free from the toils, thy fire, O oh my brother, lest it be buried in the shadow of night. Hark ye, O oh man, and list to this wisdom. Where do name and form cease? Only in consciousness invisible, an infinite force of radiance bright. The forms that ye create by brightening they vision are truly effects that follow thy cause. Man is a star bound to a body, until in the end he is freed through his strife. Only by struggle and toiling thy utmost shall the star within thee bloom out into new life. He who knows the commencement of all things, free is his star from the realm of the night. Remember, O oh man, that all which exists is only another form of that which exists not. Everything that has being is passing into yet another being, and thou thyself are not an exception. Consider the law, for all is law. Seek not that which is not of the law, for such exists only in the illusions of the senses. Wisdom cometh to all her children, even as they cometh unto wisdom. All through the ages the light has been hidden. Awake, O man, and be wise. Deep in the mysteries of life have I traveled, seeking and searching for that which is hidden. List ye, O man, and be wise. Far neath the earth crust in the halls of Amenti, mysteries I saw that are hidden from men. Oft have I journeyed the deep hidden passage, looked on the light that is life among men. There neath the flowers of life ever living, searched I the hearts and the secrets of men. Found I that man is but living in darkness, light of the great fire is hidden within. Before the lords of hidden Amenti learned I the wisdom I give unto men. Masters are they of the great secret wisdom, brought from the future of infinity's end. Seven are they the lords of Amenti, overlords they of the children of morning, sons of the cycles, masters of wisdom. Formed are not they as the children of men? Three, four, five and six, seven, eight, nine, are the titles of the masters of men. Far from the future, formless yet forming, came they as teachers for the children of men. Live they forever, yet not of the living, bound not to life and yet free from death. Rule they forever with infinite wisdom, bound yet not bound to the dark halls of death. Life they have in them, yet life that is not life, free from all the lords of the all. Forth from them came forth the Logos, instruments they of the power over all. Vast is their countenance, yet hidden in smallness, formed by a forming, known yet unknown. Three holds the key of all hidden magic, binding the souls of the children of men. Sending the darkness, binding the soul force, director of negative, to the children of men. For is he who loses the power, Lord he of life to the children of men. Light is his body, flame is his countenance, freer of souls to the children of men. Five is the master, the lord of all magic, key to the word that resounds among men. Six is the Lord of Light, the hidden pathway, path of the souls of the children of men. Seven is he who is Lord of the vastness, master of space and the key of the times. Eight is he who orders the progress, weighs and balances the journey of men. Nine is the Father, vast he of countenance, forming and changing from out of the formless. Meditate on the symbols I give thee. Keys are they, though hidden from men. 
Reach ever upward, O soul of the morning. Turn thy thoughts upward to light and to life. Find in the keys of the numbers I bring thee, light on the pathway from life unto life. Seek ye with wisdom, turn thy thoughts inward. Close not thy mind to the flower of light. Place in thy body a thought-formed picture. Think of the numbers that lead thee to life. Clear is the pathway to he who has wisdom. Open the door to the kingdom of light. Pour forth thy flame as a sun of the morning. Shut out the darkness and live in the day. Take thee, O man, as part of thy being, the seven who are, but are not as they seem. Opened, O man, have I my wisdom. Follow the path in the way I have led. Masters of wisdom, sun of the morning light, and life to the children of men. Emerald Tablet 4 The Spaceborn List ye, O man, to the voice of wisdom, list to the voice of Thoth, the Atlantean. Freely I give to thee of my wisdom, gathered from the time and space of this cycle, master of mysteries, son of the morning, living forever a child of the light, shining with brightness, star of the morning. Thoth, the teacher of men, is of all. Long time ago, I, in my childhood, lay neath the stars on long buried Atlantis, dreaming of mysteries far above men. Then in my heart grew there a great longing to conquer the pathway that led to the stars. Year after year I sought after wisdom, seeking new knowledge, following the way, until at last my soul, in great travail, broke from its bondage and bounded away. Free was I from the bondage of earthmen. Free from the body, I flashed through the night. Unlocked at last for me was the star space. Free was I from the bondage of night. Now to the end of space sought I wisdom, far beyond knowledge of finite man. Far into space my soul traveled freely into infinity's circle of light. Strange beyond knowledge were some of the planets, great and gigantic, beyond dreams of men. Yet found I law in all of its beauty, working through and among them as here among men. Flashed forth my soul through infinity's beauty, far through space I flew with my thoughts. Rested I there on a planet of beauty. Strains of harmony filled all the air. Shapes there were, moving in order, great and majestic as stars in the night. Mounting in harmony, ordered equilibrium, symbols of the cosmic, like unto law. Many the stars I passed in my journey, many the races of men on their worlds, some reaching high as stars of the morning, some falling low in the blackness of night, each and all of them struggling upward, gaining the heights and plumbing the depths, moving at times in realms of brightness, living through darkness, gaining the light. Know, O oh man, that light is thine heritage. Know that darkness is only a veil. Sealed in thy heart is brightness eternal, waiting the moment of freedom to conquer, waiting to rend the veil of the night. Some I found who had conquered the ether, free of space were they, while yet they were men. Using the force that is the foundation of all things, far in space constructed they a planet, drawn by the force that flows through the all, condensing, coalescing the ether into forms that grew as they willed. Outstripping in science, they, all of the races, mighty in wisdom, sons of the stars. Long time I paused, watching their wisdom, saw them create from out of the ether, cities gigantic of rose and gold, formed forth from the primal element, base of all matter, 
the ether far flung. Far in the past, they had conquered the ether, freed themselves from the bondage of toil, formed in their mind only a picture, and swiftly created, it grew. Forth then, my soul sped, throughout the cosmos, seeing ever, new things and old, learning that man is truly space-born, a son of the sun, a child of the stars. Know ye, O man, whatever from ye inhabit, surely it is one with the stars. Thy bodies are nothing but planets revolving around their central suns. When ye have gained the light of all wisdom, free shall ye be to shine in the ether, one of the suns that light outer darkness, one of the space-born grown into light. Just as the stars in time lose their brilliance, light passing from them into the great source, so, O oh man, the soul passes onward, leaving behind the darkness of night. Formed forth ye from the primal ether, filled with the brilliance that flows from the source, bound by the ether coalesced around, yet ever it flames until, at last, it is free. Lift up your flame from out of the darkness, fly from the night and ye shall be free. Traveled I through space-time, knowing my soul at last was set free, knowing that now might I pursue wisdom, until at last I passed to a plane, hidden from knowledge, known not to wisdom extension beyond all that we know. Now, O oh man, when I had this knowing, happy my soul grew, for now I was free. Listen ye, space-born, list to my wisdom, know ye not that ye too will be free. List ye again, O oh man, to my wisdom, that hearing ye too might live and be free. Not of the earth are ye, earthy, but child of the infinite cosmic light. Know ye not, O man, of your heritage? Know ye not ye are truly the light? Son of the great sun, when ye gain wisdom, truly aware of your kinship with light. Now to ye I give knowledge, freedom to walk in the path I have trod, showing ye truly how by my striving I trod the path that leads to the stars. Hark ye, O man, and know of thy bondage. Know how to free thyself from the toils. Out of the darkness shall ye rise upward, one with the light and one with the stars. Follow ye ever the path of wisdom, only by this can ye rise from below. Ever man's destiny leads him onward, into the curves of infinity's all. Know ye, O man, that all space is ordered, only by order are ye one with the all. Order and balance are the law of the cosmos. Follow, and ye shall be one with the all. He who would follow the pathway of wisdom, open must be to the flower of life, extending his consciousness out of the darkness, flowing through time and space in the all. Deep in the silence first ye must linger, until at last ye are free from desire, free from the longing to speak in the silence, conquer by silence the bondage of words. Abstaining from eating until we have conquered desire for food, that is bondage of soul. Then lie ye down in the darkness, close ye your eyes from the rays of the light. Center thy soul force in the place of thine consciousness, shaking it free from the bonds of the night. Place in thy mind, place the image thou desireth. Picture the place thou desireth to see. Vibrate back and forth with thy power. Loosen the soul from out of its night. Fiercely must thou shake with all of thy power, until at last thy soul shall be free. Mighty beyond words is the flame of the cosmic, hanging in planes, unknown to man, mighty and balanced, moving in order, music of harmonies far beyond man. Speaking with music, singing with color, 
flame from the beginning of eternity's all. Spark of the flame art thou, O my children, burning with color and living with music. List to the voice and thou shalt be free. Consciousness free is fused with the cosmic, one with the order and lo of the all. Knew ye not man that out of the darkness light shall flame forth a symbol of all. Pray ye this prayer for attaining or wisdom. Pray for the coming of light to the all. Mighty spirit of light that shines through the cosmos, draw my flame closer in harmony to thee. Lift up my fire from out of the darkness, magnet of fire that is one with the all. Lift up my soul, thou might and potent. Child of the light, turn not away, draw me in power to melt in thy furnace. One with all things and all things in one, fire of the life strain and one with the brain. When ye have freed thy soul from its bondage, know that for ye the darkness is gone. Ever through space ye may seek wisdom, bound not by fetters forged in the flesh. Onward and upward into the morning, free flash, O soul, to the realms of light. Move thou in order, move thou in harmony. Freely shalt move with the children of light. Seek ye and know ye my key of wisdom. Thus, O man, ye shall surely be free. Emerald Tablet 5 The Dweller of Unal Oft dream I of buried Atlantis, lost in the ages that have passed into night. Aeon on aeon thou existed in beauty, a light shining through the darkness of night. Mighty in power, ruling the earth-born, lord of the earth in Atlantis's day. King of the nations, master of wisdom, light through sun tall, keeper of the way, dwelt in his temple, the master of Unal, light of the earth in Atlantis's day. Master he from a cycle beyond us, living in bodies as one among men, not as the earthborn, he from beyond us, son of a cycle, advanced beyond men. Know ye, O man, that Horlet the master was never one with the children of men. Far in the past, time when Atlantis first grew as a power, appeared there one with the key of wisdom, showing the way of light to all. Showed he to all men the path of attainment, way of the light that flows among men, mastering darkness, leading the man's soul, upward to heights that were one with the light. Divided the kingdoms, he into sections, ten were they, ruled by children of men. Upon another built he a temple, built but not by the children of men. Out of the ether called he its substance, molded and formed by the power of Italan, into the forms he built with his mind. Mile upon mile it covered the island, space upon space it grew in its might, black yet not black, but dark like the space-time deep in its heart the essence of light. Swiftly the temple grew into being, molded and shaped by the word of the dweller, called from the formless into a form. Builded he then, within it, great chambers, filled them with forms called forth from the ether, filled them with wisdom called forth by his mind. Formless was he within his temple, Yet was he formed in the image of men, dwelling among them, yet not of them, strange and far different was he from the children of men. Chose he then from among the people, three who became his gateway. Choose he the three from the highest to become his links with Atlantis. Messengers they who carried his counsel 
to the kings of the children of men. Brought he forth others and taught them wisdom, teachers they, to the children of men. Placed he them on the island of Undal, to stand as teachers of light to men. Each of those who were thus chosen, taught must he be, for years five and ten. Only thus could he have understanding to bring light to the children of men. Thus there came into being the temple, a dwelling place for the master of men. I, Thoth, have ever sought wisdom, searching in darkness and searching in light. Long in my youth I traveled the pathway, seeking ever new knowledge to gain, until, after much striving, one of the three to me brought the light. Brought he to me the commands of the dweller, called me from the darkness into the light. Brought he me before the dweller, deep in the temple before the great fire. There on the great throne beheld I the dweller, clothed with the light and flashing with fire. Down I knelt before that great wisdom, feeling the light flowing through me in waves. Heard I then the voice of the dweller. O darkness, come into the light. Long have ye sought the pathway to light. Each soul on earth that loosens its fetters shall soon be made free from the bondage of night. Forth from the darkness have ye arisen, closer approached the light of your goal. Here ye shall dwell as one of my children, keeper of records gathered by wisdom, instrument thou of the light from beyond, ready by thou made to do what is needed, preserver of wisdom through the ages of darkness, that shall come fast on the children of men. Live thee here, and drink of all wisdom, secrets and mysteries, unto thee shall unveil. Then answered I, the master of cycles, saying, O light that descended to men, give thou to me of thy wisdom, that I might be a teacher of men. Give thou of thy light, that I may be free. Spoke then to me again the master. Age after age shall ye live through your wisdom. I, when o'er Atlantis the ocean waves roll, holding the light, though hidden in darkness, ready to come, whenever thou shalt call. Go thee now and learn greater wisdom. Grow thou through light to infinity's all. Long then dwelt I in the temple of the dweller, until at last I was one with the light. Followed I then the path to the star plains. Followed I then the pathway to light. Deep into earth's heart I followed the pathway, learning the secrets below as above, learning the pathway to the halls of Amenti, learning the law that balances the word. To earth's hidden chambers pierced I by my wisdom, deep through the earth's crust, into the pathway, hidden for ages from the children of men, unveiled before me ever more wisdom until I reached a new knowledge, found that all is part of an all, great and yet greater than all that we know. Searched I infinity's heart through all the ages, deep and yet deeper, more mysteries I found. Now, as I look back through the ages, know I that wisdom is boundless, ever grown greater throughout the ages, one with infinities greater than all. Light there was in ancient Atlantis. Yet darkness, too, was hidden in all. Fell from the light into the darkness, some who had risen to heights among men. Proud they became because of their knowledge. Proud were they of their place among men. Deep delved they into the forbidden, opened the gateway that led to below. Sought they to gain ever more knowledge, but seeking to bring it up from below. He who descends below must have balance, else he is bound by lack of our light. 
opened by then, by their knowledge, pathways forbidden to man. But in his temple, all-seeing, the dweller lay in his aguanti, while through Atlantis his soul roamed free. Saw he the Atlanteans, by their magic, opening the gateway that would bring to earth a great woe. Fast fled his soul, then, back to his body. Up he rose from his aguanti. Called he the three mighty messengers, gave the commands that shattered the world. Deep neath earth's crust to the halls of Amenti. Swiftly descended the dweller. Called he then on the powers the seven lords wielded. Changed the earth's balance. Down sank Atlantis beneath the dark waves. Shattered the gateway that had been opened. Shattered the doorway that led down below. All of the islands were shattered except Unal, and part of the island of the sons of the dweller. Preserved he them to be the teachers, lights on the path for those to come after, lights for the lesser children of men. Called he then, I, Thoth, before him, gave me commands for all I should do, saying, Take thou, O Thoth, all of your wisdom. Take all your records, take all your magic. Go thou forth as a teacher of men. Go thou forth serving the records until in time light grows among men. Light shalt thou be all through the ages, hidden yet found by enlightened men. Over all earth give we ye power, free thou to give or take it away. Gather thou now the sons of Atlantis, take them and flee to the people of the rock caves, fly to the land of the children of Chem. Then gathered I the sons of Atlantis, into the spaceship I brought all my records, brought the records of sunken Atlantis, gathered I all of my powers, instruments, many of mighty magic. Up then we rose on wings of the morning, High we arose above the temple, leaving behind the three and dweller. Deep in the halls, neath the temple, closing the pathway to the lords of the cycles. Yet ever to him who has knowing, open shall be the path to Amenti. Fast fled we then on the wings of the morning, fled to the land of the children of Chem. There by my power, I conquered and ruled them. Raised I to light, the children of Chem. Deep neath the rocks I buried my spaceship, waiting the time when man might be free. Over the spaceship erected a marker in the form of a lion, yet like unto man. There neath the image rests my spaceship, forth to be brought when need shall arise. Know ye, O man, that far in the future invaders shall come from out of the deep. Then awake, ye who have wisdom. Bring forth my ship and conquer with ease. Deep neath the image lies my secret. Search and find in the pyramid I built. Each to the other is the keystone, each the gateway that leads into life. Follow the key. I leave behind me. Seek, and the doorway to life shall be thine. Seek thou in my pyramid, deep in the passage that ends in a wall. Use thou the key of the seven, and open to thee the pathway will fall. Now unto thee I have given my wisdom, now unto thee I have given my way. Follow the pathway, solve thou my secrets. Unto thee I have shown the way. Emerald Tablet 6 The Key of Magic Hark ye, O man, to the wisdom of magic. Hark the knowledge of powers forgotten. Long ago, in the days of the first man, warfare began between darkness and light. Man, then as now, were filled with both darkness and light, 
and while in some darkness hell sway, in other light filled the soul. I, age old in this warfare, the eternal struggle between darkness and light, fiercely it is fought all through the ages, using strange powers hidden to man. Adepts has there been filled with the blackness, struggling always against the light. But others there are who, filled with brightness, have ever conquered the darkness of night. Wherever ye may be, in all ages and plain, surely ye shall know of the battle with night. Long ages ago, the sons of the morning, descending, found the world filled with night. There in that past begun the struggle, the age-old battle, darkness and light. Many in the time were so filled with darkness that only feebly flamed the light from the night. Some they were masters of darkness who sought to fill all with their darkness, sought to draw others into their night. Fiercely withstood they the masters of brightness, fiercely fought they from the darkness of night, sought ever to tighten the fetters, the chains that bind men to the darkness of night. Used they always the dark magic, brought into men by the power of darkness, magic that enshrouded man's soul with darkness. Banded together as an order, brothers of darkness, they through the ages, antagonists they to the children of men, walked they always secret and hidden, found, yet not found by the children of man. Forever they walked and worked in darkness, hiding from the light the darkness of night. Silently, secretly, used they their power, enslaving and binding the soul of men. Unseen they come, and unseen they go, man in his ignorance calls them from below. Dark is the way of the dark brothers' travel, dark of the darkness, not of the night. Traveling o'er earth, they walk through man's dreams, power they have gained from the darkness around them, to call other dwellers from out of their plane, in ways that are dark and unseen by man, into man's mind space reach the dark brothers. Around it they close the veil of their night, there, through its lifetime, that soul dwells in bondage, bound by the fetters of the veil of the night. Mighty are they in the forbidden knowledge, forbidden because it is one with the night. Hark ye, old man, and list to my warning. Be ye free from the bondage of night. Surrender not your soul to the brothers of darkness. Keep thy face ever turned towards the light. Know ye not, O man, that your sorrow only has come through the veil of the night? I, man, heed ye my warning, strive ever upward, turn your soul toward the light. The brothers of darkness seek for their brothers, those who traveled the pathway of light. For well know they that those who have traveled far towards the sun in their pathway of light have great and yet greater power to bind them with darkness the children of light. List ye, O man, to he who comes to you, but weigh in the balance if his words be of light. For many there are who walk in dark brightness, and yet are not the children of light. Easy it is to follow their pathway, easy to follow the path that they lead. But yet, O man, Heed ye my warning, light comes only to him who strives. Hard is the pathway that leads to the wisdom, hard is the pathway that leads to the light. Many shall ye find the stones in your pathway, many the mountains to climb toward the light. Yet know ye, O man, to him that overcometh, free will he be of the pathway of light. For ye know, O man, in the end light must conquer, and darkness and night be banished from light. Listen, O man, and heed ye this wisdom, even as darkness, so is the light.
when darkness is banished and all veils are rendered, out there shall flash from the darkness the light. Even as exist among men the dark brothers, so there exists the brothers of light. Antagonists, they of the brothers of darkness, seeking to free men from the night. Powers have they, mighty and potent, knowing the law the planets obey. Work they ever in harmony and order, freeing the man-soul from its bondage of night. Secret and hidden walk they also, known not are they to the children of men. Ever have they fought the dark brothers, conquered and conquering time without end. Yet always light shall in the end be master, driving away the darkness of night. I, man, know ye this knowing, always beside thee walk the children of light. Masters they of the sun power, ever unseen yet the guardians of men. Open to all is their pathway, open to he who will walk in the light. Free are they of dark amenti, free of the halls where life reigns supreme. Sons are they, and lords of the morning, children of light to shine among men. Like man are they, and yet are unlike, never divided were they in the past. One have they been in oneness eternal, throughout all space since the beginning of time. Up did they come in oneness with the All One, up from the first space, formed and unformed. Given to man have they the secrets that shall guard and protect him from all harm. He who would travel the path of the Master, free must he be from the bondage of night. Conquer must he the formless and shapeless, conquer must he the phantom of fear, knowing must he gain of all the secrets, Travel the pathway that leads through the darkness, yet ever before him keep the light of his goal. Obstacles great shall he meet in the pathway, yet press on to the light of the sun. Hear ye, O man, the sun is the symbol of the light that shines at the end of thy road. Now to thee give I the secrets, now to meet the dark power, meet and conquer the fear from the night. Only by knowing can ye conquer, only be knowing can ye have light. Now I give unto thee the knowledge known to the masters, the knowing that conquers all the dark fears. Use this, the wisdom I give thee, master thou shalt be of the brothers of night. When unto thee comes a feeling, drawing thee nearer to the darker gate, Examine thine heart, and find if the feeling thou hast come from within. If thou shalt find the darkness thine own thoughts, banish them forth from the place in thy mind. Send through thy body a wave of vibration, irregular first and regular second, repeating time after time until free. Start the wave force in thy brain center, direct it in waves from thine head to thy foot. But if thou findest thine heart is not darkened, be sure that a force is directed to thee. Only by knowing can thou overcome it. Only by wisdom can thou hope to be free. Knowledge brings wisdom, and wisdom is power. Attain, and ye shall have power over all. Seek ye first a place bound by darkness. Place ye a circle around about thee. Stand erect in the midst of the circle. Use thou this formula, and you shalt be free. Raise thou thine hands to the dark space above thee. Close thou thine eyes, and draw it in the light. Call to the spirit of light through the space-time, using these words, and thou shalt be free. Fill thou my body, O spirit of life, Fill thou my body with spirit of light. Come from the flower that shines through the darkness. Come from the halls where the seven lords rule. Name them by name, I, the seven. Three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine. 
By their names I call them to aid me. Free me and save me from the darkness of night. Untanas, Quertas, Chietal, and Goyana, Huerto, Semveta, Ardal. By their names I implore thee, find me from darkness and fill me with light. Know ye, O man, that when ye have done this, ye shall be free from the fetters that bind ye. Cast off the bondage of the brothers of night. See ye not that the names have the power to free by vibration the fetters that bind? Use them at need to free thou thine brother, so that he too may come forth from the night. Use them at need to free thou thine brother, so that he too may come forth from the night. Thou, O man, art thy brother's helper. Let him not lie in the bondage of night. Now unto thee give I my magic. Take it and dwell on the pathway of light. Light unto thee, life unto thee. Sun, may thou be on the cycle above. Emerald Tablet 7 The Seven Lords Hark ye, O man, and list to my voice. Open thy mind space, and drink of my wisdom. Dark is the pathway of life that ye travel, many the pitfalls that lie in the way. Seek ye ever to gain greater wisdom. Attain it, and it shall be light on thy way. Open thy soul, O man, to the cosmic, and let it flow in as one with thy soul. Light is eternal and darkness is fleeting. Seek ye ever, O man, for the light. Know ye that ever as light fills thy being, darkness for thee shall soon disappear. Open thy souls to the brothers of brightness. Let them enter and fill thee with light. Lift up thine eyes to the light of the cosmos. Keep thou ever thy face to the goal. Only by gaining the light of all wisdom art thou one with the infinite goal. Seek ye ever the oneness eternal. Seek ever the light into one. Hear ye, O man, list to my voice, singing the song of light and of life. Throughout all space, light is prevalent, encompassing all with its banners of flames. Seek ye forever in the veil of the darkness. Somewhere ye shall surely find light. Hidden and buried, lost to man's knowledge, deep in the finite and infinite exists, lost but existing, flowing through all things, living in all is the infinite brain. In all space there is only one wisdom, through seeming decided it is one in the one. All that exists come forth from the light, and the light comes forth from the all. Everything created is based upon order. Law rules the space where the infinite dwells. Forth from equilibrium came the great cycles, moving in harmony toward infinity's end. Know ye, O man, that far in the space-time, infinity itself shall pass into change. Hear ye, and list ye to the voice of wisdom. Know that all is of all evermore. Know that through time thou may pursue wisdom, and find evermore light on the way. I, thou shall find that, ever receding, thy goal shall elude thee from day unto day. Long time ago, in the halls of Amenti, I, Thoth, stood before the lords of the cycles, mighty they in their aspects of power, mighty they in the wisdom unveiled. Led by the dweller, first did I see them, but afterwards free was I of their presence, free to enter their conclave at will. Oft did I journey down the dark pathway unto the hall where the light ever glows. Learned I of the masters of cycles, wisdom brought from the cycles above. Manifest they in this cycle as guides of man to the knowledge of all. Seven are they, mighty in power, speaking these words through me to men. Time after time stood I before them listening to words that came not with sound. Once said they unto me, 
O man, wouldst thou gain wisdom? Seek for it in the heart of the flame. Wouldst thou gain knowledge of power? Seek ye it in the heart of the flame. Wouldst be one with the heart of the flame? Seek then within thine own hidden flame. Many the times spoke they to me, teaching me wisdom not of the world, showing me ever new paths to brightness, teaching me wisdom brought from above, giving knowledge of operation, learning of law, the order of all. Spoke to me again the seven, saying, From far beyond time are we, come, O man, Traveled we from beyond space-time, I, from the place of infinity's end, when ye and all of thy brethren were formless, formed forth were we from the order of all. Not as men are we, though once we, too, were as men. Out of the great void were we formed forth, in order by law. For know ye that which is formed truly is formless having form only to thine eyes. And again unto me spoke the seven, saying, Child of the light, O Thoth, art thou, free to travel the bright path upward, until at last all ones become one. Forth were we formed after our order. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Know ye that these are the numbers of cycles, that we descend from unto man, each having here a duty to fulfill, each having here a force to control. Yet are we one with the soul of our cycle, yet are we, too, seeking a goal. Far beyond man's conception, infinity extends into a greater than all. There, in a time that is not yet a time, we shall all become one with a greater than all. Time and space are moving in circles. Know ye their law, and ye too shall be free. Aye, free shall ye be to move through the cycles, past the guardians that dwell at the door. Then to me spoke he of nine, saying, Aeons and aeons have I existed, knowing not life and tasting not death. For know ye, O man, that far in the future life and death shall be one with the all each so perfected by balancing the other, that neither exists in the oneness of all. In men of this cycle, the life force is rampant, but life in its growth becomes one with the all. Here I manifest in this your cycle, but yet am I there in your future time. Yet to me time exists not, for in my world time exists not, for formless are we, Life have we not, but yet have existence, fuller and greater, and freer than free. Man is a flame bound to a mountain, but we in our cycle shall ever be free. Know ye, O man, that when ye have progressed into the cycle that lengthen above, life itself will pass into the darkness, and only the essence of soul shall remain. Then to me spoke the Lord of the Eight, saying, All that ye know is but part of little. Not as yet have ye touched on the great. Far out in space, where light beings supreme, came I into the light, formed was I also, but not as ye are. Body of light was my formless form formed. Know I not life, and know I not death, yet master am I of all that exists. Seek ye to find the path through the barriers, Travel the road that leads to the light. Spoke again to me the nine, saying, Seek ye to find the path to beyond. Not impossible is it to grow to a consciousness above. For when two have become one, and one has become all, know ye the barrier has lifted, and ye are made free of the road. Grow thou from form to the formless, free may thou be of the road. Thus through ages I listened, learning the way to the all. Now lift I my thoughts to the all thing, list ye and hear when it calls. O light, 
all-pervading, one with the all and all with one. Flow thou to me through the channel, enter thou so that I may be free. Make me one with the all-soul, shining from the blackness of night. Free, let me be of all space-time, free from the veil of the night. I, a child of light, command, free from the darkness to be. Formless am I to the light-soul, formless yet shining with light. No, I, the bonds of the darkness, must shatter and fall before light. Now give I this wisdom, free may ye be, O man, living in light and in brightness. Turn not thy face from the light. Thy soul dwells in realms of brightness, ye are a child of the light. Turn thy thoughts inward, not outward. Find thou light soul within. Know that thou art the master. All else is brought from within. Grow thou to realms of brightness. Hold thou thy thought on the light. Know thou art one with the cosmos, a flame and a child of the light. Now to thee I gave warning. Let not the thought turn away. Know that the brightness flows through thy body for I. Turn not to the dark brothers that come from the brothers of black. But keep thine eyes ever lifted, thy soul in tune with the light. Take ye this wisdom and heed it. List to my voice and obey. Follow the pathway to brightness, and thou shall be one with the way. Emerald Tablet 8 the key of mystery. Unto thee, O man, have I given my knowledge. Unto thee have I given of light. Hear ye now and receive my wisdom, brought from space, plains above and beyond. Not as man am I, for free have I become of dimensions and planes. In each take I on a new body, in each I change in my form. Know I now that the formless is all there is of form. Great is the wisdom of the seven. Mighty are they from beyond. Manifest they through their power, filled by force from beyond. Hear ye these words of wisdom. Hear ye and make them thine own. Find in them the formless. Mystery is but hidden knowledge. Know and ye shall unveil. Find the deep buried wisdom and be a master of darkness and light. Deep are the mysteries around thee, hidden the secrets of old. Search through the keys of my wisdom, surely shall ye find the way. The gateway to power is secret, but he who attains shall receive. Look to the light, O my brother. Open and ye shall receive. Press on through the valley of darkness, overcome the dweller of night. Keep ever thine eyes of the light plain, and thou shalt be one with the light. Man is in process of changing to forms that are not of this world. Grows he is time to the formless, a plain on the cycle above. Know ye, ye must become formless before ye are with the light. List ye, O man, to my voice, telling of pathways to light, showing the way of attainment, when ye shall be one with the light. Search ye the mysteries of earth's heart, learn of the law that exists, holding the stars in their balance by the force of the primordial mist. Seek ye the flame of the earth's life, bathe in the glare of its flame, follow the three-cornered pathway until thou too art aflame. Speak thou in words without voice to those who dwell down below, Enter the blue litten temple, and bathe in the fire of all life. Know, O man, thou art complex, a being of earth and of fire. Let thy flame shine out brightly, be thou only the fire. Wisdom is hidden in darkness, when lit by the flame of the soul. Find thou the wisdom, and be light-born, a son of the light without form. Seek thee ever more wisdom, find it in the heart of the flame. Know that only by striving and light pour into thy brain.
Now have I spoken with wisdom. List to my voice and obey. Tear open the veils of the darkness. Shine a light on the way. Speak I of ancient Atlantis. Speak of the days of the kingdom of shadows. Speak of the coming of the children of shadows. Out of the great deep were they called by the wisdom of earthmen, called for the purpose of gaining great power. Far in the past before Atlantis existed, men there were who delved into darkness, using dark magic, calling up beings from the great deep below us. Forth came they into this cycle, formless were they of another vibration, existing unseen by the children of earth men. Only through blood could they have formed being, only through man could they live in the world. In ages past were they conquered by masters, driven below to the place whence they came. But some there were who remained, hidden in spaces and plains unknown to man. Lived they in Atlantis as shadows, but at times they appeared among men. I, when the blood was offered, for they came they to dwell among men. In the form of man they amongst us, but only to sight were they as our men, serpent-headed when the glamour was lifted, but appearing to man as men among men. Crept they into the councils, taking forms that were like unto men, slaying by their arts the chiefs of the kingdoms, taking their form and ruling over man. Only by magic could they be discovered, only by sound could their faces be seen. Sought they from the kingdom of shadows to destroy man and rule in his place. But know ye, the masters were mighty in magic, able to lift the veil from the face of the serpent, able to send him back to his place. Came they to man and taught him the secret, the word that only a man can pronounce. Swift then they lifted the veil from the serpent and cast him forth from the place among men. Yet beware the serpent still liveth, in a place that is open at times to the world. Unseen they walk among thee in places where the rites have been said. Again, as time passes onward, shall they take the semblance of men. Called may they be by the master, who knows the white or the black, but only the white master may control and bind them while in the flesh. Seek not the kingdom of shadows, for evil will surely appear, for only the master of brightness shall conquer the shadow of fear. Know ye, O my brother, that fear is an obstacle great. Be master of all in the brightness, the shadow will soon disappear. Hear ye and heed my wisdom, the voice of light is clear. Seek not the valley of shadow, and light will only appear. List ye, O man, to the depth of my wisdom. Speak I of knowledge hidden from man. Far have I been on my journey through space-time, even to the end of space of this cycle. I glimpsed the hounds of the barrier, lying in wait for he who would pass them, in that space where time exists not. Faintly I sensed the guardians of cycles, move they only through angles, Free are they not of the curved dimensions. Strange and terrible are the hounds of the barrier. Follow they consciousness to the limits of space. Think not to escape by entering your body, for follow they fast the soul through angles. Only the circle will give ye protection, save from the claws of the dwellers in angles. Once in a time past, I approached the great barrier and saw on the shores where time exists not, the formless forms of the hounds of the barrier. I, hiding in the midst beyond time, I found them, and they, scenting me afar off, raised themselves and gave the great bell cry that could be heard from cycle to cycle and moved through space toward my soul. Fled I then fast before them, back from time's unthinkable end, but ever after me pursued they, moving in strange angles not known to man. 
I, on the gray shores of time-space's end, found I the hounds of the barrier. Ravening for the soul who attempts the beyond, fled I through circles back to my body, fled and fast after me they followed. I, after me the devourers followed, seeking through angles to devour my soul. I, know ye man, that the soul who dares the barrier may be held in bondage by the hounds from beyond time, held to this cycle is completed and left behind when the consciousness leaves. Entered I my body, created the circles that know not angles, created the form that from my form was formed, made my body into a circle, and lost the pursuers in the circles of time. But even yet, when free from my body, cautious ever must I be, not to move through angles, else my soul may never be free. Know ye the hounds of the barrier, move only through angles, and never through curves of space. Only by moving through curves can ye escape them, for in angles they will pursue thee. O man, heed ye my warning. Seek not to break open the gate to beyond. Few there are who have succeeded in passing the barrier to the greater light that shines beyond. For know ye, ever the dwellers, seek such souls to hold in their thrall. Listen, O man, and heed ye my warning. Seek ye to move not in angles but curves. And if while free from thy body thou hearest the sound like the bay of a hound, ringing clear and bell-like through thy being, flee back to thy body through circles, penetrate not the mist before. When thou hath entered the form thou hast dwelt in, use thou the cross and the circle combined, open thy mouth and use thou thy voice, utter the word and thou shalt be free. Only the one who of light has the fullest can hope to pass by the guards of the way, and then must he move through strange curves and angles that are formed in direction not known to man. List ye, O man, and heed ye my warning. Attempt not to pass the guards on the way. Rather should ye seek to gain of thine own light and make thyself ready to pass on the way. Light is thine ultimate end, O my brother. Seek and find ever the light on the way. Emerald Tablet 9, The Key to Freedom of Space List ye, O man, hear ye my voice, teaching of wisdom and light in this cycle, teaching ye how to banish the darkness, teaching ye how to bring light in thy life. Seek ye, O man, to find the great pathway that leads to eternal life as a son. Draw ye away from the veil of darkness, seek to become a light in the world. Make of thyself a vessel for light, a focus for the sun of this space. Lift thou thine eyes to the cosmos, lift thou thine eyes to the light. Speak in the words of the dweller, the chant that calls down the light. Sing thou the song of freedom, sing thou the song of the soul. Create the high vibration that will make thee one with the whole. Blend all thyself with the cosmos. Grow into one with the light. Be thou a channel of order, a pathway of law to the world. Thy light, O man, is the great light, shining through the shadow of flesh. Free must thou rise from the darkness before thou art one with the light. Shadows of darkness surround thee. Life fills thee with its flow. But know, O man, thou must arise, and forth thy body go far to the plains that surround thee, and yet are one with thee, too. Look all around thee, O man, see thine own light reflected, I, even in the darkness around thee, thine own light pours forth through the veil. Seek thou for wisdom always, let not thine body betray, keep in the path of the light wave. Shun thou the darkened way, know thee that wisdom is lasting, existing since the all-soul began, creating harmony from the law that exists in the way. 
List ye, O man, to the teachings of wisdom. List to the voice that speaks of the past time. I, I shall tell thee knowledge forgotten. Tell ye of wisdom hidden in past time, lost in the midst of darkness around me. Know ye, man, ye are the ultimate of all things. Only the knowledge of this is forgotten, lost when man was cast into bondage, bound and fettered by the chains of the darkness. Long, long ago, I cast off my body, wandered I free through the vastness of ether, circled the angles that hold man in bondage. Know ye, O man, ye are only a spirit. The body is nothing, the soul is all. Let not your body be a fetter. Cast off the darkness and travel in light. Cast off your body, O man, and be free. Truly a light that is one with the light. When ye are free from the fetters of darkness and travel in space as the sun of the light, then ye shall know that space is not boundless, but truly bounded by angles and curves. Know ye, O man, that all that exists is only an aspect of greater things yet to come. Matter is fluid and flows like a stream, constantly changing from one thing to another. When ye are free from the fetters of darkness, and travel in space as the sun of the light, then ye shall know that space is not boundless, but truly bounded by angles and curves. Know ye, O man, that all that exists is only an aspect of greater things yet to come. Matter is fluid and flows like a stream, constantly changing from one thing to another. All through the ages has knowledge existed, never been changed, though buried in darkness, never been lost, though forgotten by man. Know ye that throughout the space that ye dwell in are others as great as your own, interlaced through the heart of your matter, yet separate in space of their own. Once in a time long forgotten, I, Thoth, opened the doorway, penetrated into other spaces, and learned of the secrets concealed. Deep in the essence of matter are many mysteries concealed. Nine are the interlocked dimensions, and nine are the cycles of space. Nine are the diffusions of consciousness, and nine are the worlds within worlds. I, nine are the lords of the cycles that come from above and below. Space is filled with concealed ones, for space is divided by time. Seek ye the key to the time-space, and ye shall unlock the gate. Know ye that throughout the time-space consciousness surely exists. Though from our knowledge it is hidden, yet still forever exists. The key to worlds within thee are found only within. For man is the gateway of mystery, and the key that is one with the one. Seek ye within the circle, use the word I shall give. Open the gateway within thee, and surely thou too shall live. Man, ye think that ye liveth, but know it is life within death. For as sure as ye are bound to your body, for you no life exists. Only the soul is space-free, has life that is really a life. All else is only a bondage, a fetter from which to be free. Think not that man is earth-born, though come from the earth he may be. Man is light-born spirit, but without knowing he can never be free. Darkness surrounds the light-born, darkness fetters the soul. Only the one who is seeking may ever hope to be free. Shadows around thee are falling, darkness fills all the space. Shine forth, O light of the man-soul, fill thou the darkness of space. Ye are the sun of the great light, remember and ye shall be free. Stay not thou in the shadows, spring forth from the darkness of night. Light let thy soul be, O sun-born, filled with glory of light. Freed from the bonds of the darkness, a soul that is one with the light. Thou art the key to all wisdom, Within thee is all time and space. Live not in bondage to darkness. Free thou thy light form from night. Great light that fills all the cosmos, flow thou fully to man. Make of his body a light torch that shall never be quenched among men. 
Long in the past sought I wisdom, knowledge not known to man. Far to the past I traveled, into the space where time began. Sought I ever new knowledge, to add to the wisdom I knew. Yet only I found did the future hold the key to the wisdom I sought. Down to the holes of Amenti I journeyed, the greater knowledge to seek. Ask of thee, lords of the cycles, the way to the wisdom I sought. Ask the lords this question, where is the source of all? Answered in tones that were mighty. The voice of the lord of the nine, free thou thy soul from thy body, and come forth with me to the light. Forth I came from my body, a glittering flame in the night, stood I before the Lord, bathed in the fire of life. Seized was I then by a force, great beyond knowledge of man. Cast was I to the abyss, through spaces unknown to man. Saw I the moldings of order, from the chaos and angles of night. Saw I the light, spring from order, and heard the voice of the light. Saw I the flame of the abyss, casting forth order and light. Saw order spring out of chaos, saw light giving forth life. Then heard I the voice, Hear thou and understand, the flame is the source of all things, containing all things in potentiality. The order that sent forth light is the word and from the word, come life and the existence of all. And again spoke the voice, saying, The life in thee is the word. Find thou the life within thee, and have powers to use of the word. Long I watched the light flame, pouring forth from the essence of fire, realizing that life but order, and that man is one with the fire. Back I came to my body, stood again with the nine, listened to the voice of the cycles, vibrate with the powers they spoke. Know ye, O thought, that life is but the word of the fire. The life forth ye seek before thee is but the word in the world as a fire. Seek ye the path to the word, and powers shall surely be thine. Then asked I of the nine, O Lord, show me the path, give the path to the wisdom, show me the way to the word. Answered me then, the Lord of the nine, through order ye shall find the way. Saw ye that the word came from chaos? Saw ye not that light came from fire? Look in thy life for this order, balance and order thy life. Quell all the chaos of the emotions, and thou shalt have order in life. Order brought forth from chaos will bring thee the word of the source. Will thee the power of cycles, and make of thy soul a force that free will extend through the ages, a perfect sun from the source. Listened I to the voice, and deep thanked the words in my heart. Forever have I sought for order, that I might draw on the word. Know ye, that he who attains it, must ever in order be for use. Of the word, though this order, has never and can never be. Take ye these words, O man, as part of thy life. Let them be. Seek thee to conquer this order, and one with the word thou shalt be. Put forth thy effort in gaining light on the pathway of life. Seek to be one with the sun state. Seek to be solely the light. Hold thou thy thought on the oneness of light within the body of man. Know that all is order from chaos, born into light. Emerald Tablet 10, The Key of Time List ye, O man, take of my wisdom, learn of his deep hidden mysteries of space, learn of the thought that grew in the abyss, bringing order and harmony in space. Know ye, O man, that all exists as being only because of the law. Know ye the law, and ye shall be free. Never be bound by the fetters of night. Far through the strange spaces have I journeyed into the depth of the abyss of time, until in the end all was revealed. Know ye that mystery is only mystery, when it is knowledge unknown to man. When ye have plumbed the heart of all mystery, knowledge and wisdom will surely be thine. Seek ye and learn that time is the secret 
whereby ye may be free of this space. Long have I, wisdom, sought wisdom, I, and shall seek of eternity's end, for know that ever before me receding shall move the goal I seek to attain. Even the lords of the cycles know that not yet have they reached the goal, for with all of their wisdom they know that truth ever grows. Once, in a time past, I spoke to the dweller, asked of the mystery of time and space, asked him the question that surged in my being, saying, O Master, what is time? Then to me spoke he, the Master, Know ye, O Thoth, in the beginning, there, and void, and nothingness, a timeless, spaceless nothingness, and into the nothingness came a thought, purposeful, all-pervading, and it filled the void. There existed no matter, only force, a movement, a vortex, or vibration of the purposeful thought that filled the void. And I questioned the Master, saying, Was this thought eternal? And answered me the Dweller, saying, In the beginning there was eternal thought, and for thought to be eternal time must exist. So into the all-pervading thought grew the law of time. I, time which exists through all space, floating in a smooth, rhythmic movement, that is eternally in a state of fixation. Time changes not, but all things change in time. For time is the force that holds events separate, each in its own proper place. Time is not in motion, but ye move through time, as your consciousness moves from one event to another. Aye, but time yet exists, all in all, an eternal one existence. Know ye that even though in the time ye are separate, yet still are one in all times existent. Ceased then the voice of the dweller, and departed I to ponder on time. For knew I that in these words lay wisdom, and a way to explore the mysteries of time. Oft did I ponder the words of the dweller, then sought I to solve the mystery of time. Found I that time moves through strange angles, yet only by curves could I hope to attain the key that would give me access to the time-space. Found I that only by moving upward, and yet again by moving to rightward, could I be free from the time of the movement. Forth I came from out of my body, moved in the movements that changed me in time. Strange were the sights I saw in my journeys, many the mysteries that opened to view. I, saw I man's beginning, learned from the past that nothing is new. Seek ye, O man, to learn the pathway that leads through the spaces that are formed forth in time. Forget not, O man, with all of thy seeking, that light is the goal ye shall seek to attain. Search ye for the light on thy pathway, and ever for thee the goal shall endure. Let not thine heart turn ever to darkness. Light, let shine, soul be, a sun on the way. Know ye that eternal brightness, ye shall ever find thy soul hid in light. Never fettered by bondage or darkness, ever it shines forth a sun of the light. I know, though hidden in darkness your soul, a spark of the true flame exists, be ye one with the greatest of all lights, find at the source the end of thy goal. Light is life, for without the great light nothing can ever exist. Know ye that in all formed matter the heart of light always exists. I, even though bound in the darkness, inherent light always exists. Once I stood in the halls of Amenti, and heard the voice of the lords of Amenti, saying in tones that rang through the silence, words of power, mighty and potent, chanted they the song of the cycles, the words that opened the path to beyond. I, I saw the great path opened, and looked for the instant into the beyond. Saw I the movements of the cycles, vast as the thought of the source could convey. Knew I then even infinity is moving on to some unthinkable end. Saw I that the cosmos is order, and part of a movement that extends to all space. A party of an order of orders, constantly moving in a harmony of space. Saw I the wheeling of cycles, like vast circles across the sky. Knew I then that all has being, 
is growing to meet yet another being in a far-off grouping of space and time. Knew I then that in words are power to open the planes that are hidden from man. I, that even in words lies hidden the key that will open above and below. Hark ye, now man, this word I leave with thee. Use it, and ye shall find power in its sound. Say ye the word, Zin Uru, and power ye shall find. Yet must ye understand that man is of light, and light is of man. List ye, O man, and hear a mystery, stranger than all that lies neath the sun. Know ye, O man, that all space is filled by worlds within worlds, I, one within the other, yet separate by law. Once in my search for deep buried wisdom, I opened the door that bars them from man. Called I, from the other planes of being, one who was fairer than the daughters of men, I, I called her from out of the spaces, to shine as a light in the world of men. Used I the drum of the serpent, wore I the robe of the purple and gold, placed on my head the crown of silver, around me the circle of the cinnabar shone. Raised I my arms and cried the invocation that opens the path to the plains beyond, cried to the lords of the signs in their houses. Lords of the two horizons, watchers of the treble gates, stand ye one at the right and one at the left, as the star rises to his throne and rules over his sign. I, thou dark prince of Arulu, open the gates of the dim, hidden land and release her whom ye keep imprisoned. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye, dark lords and shining ones, and by their secret names, names which I know and can pronounce, hear ye and obey my will. Lit I then with flame my circle and called her in the space plains beyond, drought of light return from Arulu. Seven times and seven times have I passed through the fire. Food have I not eaten, water have I not drunk. I call thee from Arulu, from the realms of Akershigal. I summon thee, Lady of Light. Then before me rose the dark figures, I, the figures of the lords of Arulu. Parted they before me, and forth came the Lady of Light. Free was she now from the lords of the night, free to live in the light of the earth's sun, free to live as a child of the light. Hear ye and listen, O my children. Magic is knowledge and only is law. Be not afraid of the power within thee, for it follows law as the stars in the sky. Know ye that to be without knowledge, wisdom is magic and not of the law. But know ye that ever ye by your knowledge can approach closer to a place in the sun. List ye, my children, following my teaching, be ye ever seeker of light. Shine in the world of men all around thee, a light on the path that shall shine among men. Follow ye and learn of my magic. Know that all force is thine if thou wilt. Fear not the path that leads to knowledge, but rather shun ye the dark road. Light is thine, O man, for the taking. Cast off the fetters and thou shalt be free. Know ye that thy soul is living in bondage, fettered by fears that hold ye in thrall. Open thy eyes and see the great sunlight. Be not afraid, for all is thine own. Fear is the lord of the dark Arulu. To he who never faced the dark fear, I know that fear has existed, created by those who are bound by their fears. Shake off thy bondage, O children, and walk in the light of the glorious day. Never turn thy thoughts to the darkness, and surely ye shall be one with the light. Man is only what he believeth, a brother of darkness or a child of the light. Come through into the light, my children, walk in the pathway that leads to the sun. Hark ye now, and list to the wisdom. Use thou the word I have given unto thee. Use it, and surely thou shalt find power and wisdom, and light to walk in the way. Seek thee, and find the key I have given, and ever shalt thou be a child of the light. Tablet 11 
the key to above and below. Hear ye and listen ye, O children of Chem, to the words that I give that shall bring ye to the light. Ye know, O men, that I knew your fathers, I, your fathers in a time long ago. Deathless have I been through all the ages, living among ye since your knowledge began. Leading ye upward to the light of the great soul have I ever striven, drawing ye from out of the darkness of night. Know ye, O people amongst whom I walk, that I, Thoth, have all the knowledge and all of the wisdom known to man since the ancient days. Keeper have I been of the secrets of the great race, holder of the key that leads into life. Bringer up have I been to ye, O my children, even from the darkness of the ancient of days. Listen ye now to the words of my wisdom, Listen ye now to the message I bring. Hear ye now the words I give thee, and ye shall be raised from the darkness to light. Far in the past, when first I came to thee, found I thee in caves of rocks, lifted I thee by my power and wisdom, until thou didst shine as men among men. I found I thee without any knowing, only a little, were ye raised beyond beasts, fanned I ever the spark of thy consciousness, until at last ye flamed as men. Now shall I speak to thee knowledge, ancient beyond the thought of thy race. Know ye that we of the great race had and have knowledge that is more than man's. Wisdom we gained from the star-born races, wisdom and knowledge far beyond man. Down to us had descended the masters of wisdom, as far beyond us as I am from thee. Listen ye now while I give ye wisdom. Use it, and free thou shalt be. Know ye that in the pyramid I built are the keys that shall show ye the way into life. I draw ye a line from the great image I built to the apex of the pyramid, built as a gateway, Draw ye another opposite, in the same angle and direction. Dig ye and find that which I have hidden. There shall ye find the underground entrance to the secrets hidden before ye were men. Tell ye I now of the mystery of cycles that move in movements that are strange to the finite, for infinite are they beyond knowledge of man. Know ye that there are nine of the cycles, I, nine above and fourteen below, moving in harmony to the place of joining that shall exist in the future of time. Know ye that the lords of the cycles are units of consciousness sent from the others to unify this with the all. Highest are they of the consciousness of all cycles, working in harmony with the law Know they that in time all will be perfected, having none above and none below, but all one in a perfected infinity, a harmony of all in the oneness of all. Deep neath the earth's surface in the halls of Amenti sit the seven, the lords of the cycles, I and another, the lord from below. Yet know thee that in infinity there is neither above nor below, but ever there is and ever shall be oneness of all when all is complete. Oft have I stood before the lords of the all, oft at the fount of their wisdom have drunken, and filled both my body and soul with their light. Spoke they to me and told me of cycles, and the law that gives them the means to exist. I spoke to me the lord of the nine, saying, O Thoth, Great are ye among earth children, but mysteries exist of which ye know not. Ye know that ye came from a space-time below this, and know ye shall travel to a space-time beyond. But little ye know of the mysteries within them, little ye know of the wisdom beyond. Know ye that ye, as a whole in this consciousness, are only a cell in the process of growth. 
The consciousness below thee is ever expanding in different ways from those known to thee. I, it, though in space-time below thee, is ever growing in ways that are different from those that were part of the ways of thine own. For know that it grows as a result of thy growth, but not in the same way that thou didst grow. The growth that thou had and have in the present have brought into being a cause and effect. No consciousness follows the path of those before it, else all would be repetition and vain. Each consciousness in the cycle it exists in follows its own path to the ultimate goal. Each plays its part in the plan of the cosmos, each plays its part in the ultimate end. The farther the cycle, the greater the knowledge and ability to blend the law of the whole. Know ye that ye in the cycles below us are working the minor parts of the law, while we of the cycle that stands to infinity take of the striving and build greater law. Each has his own part to play in the cycles, each has his work to complete in his way. The cycle below thee is yet not below thee, but only formed for a need that exists. For know ye that the fountain of wisdom that sends forth the cycles is eternally seeking new powers to gain. Ye know that knowledge is gained only by practice, and wisdom comes forth only from knowledge, and thus are the cycles created by law. Means are they for the gaining of knowledge, for the plane of law that is the source of the all. The cycle below is not truly below, but only different in space and time. The consciousness there is working and testing lesser things than those ye are. And know, just as ye are working on greater, so above ye are those who are also working, as ye are on yet other laws. The difference that exists between the cycles is only inability to work with the law. We who have being in cycles beyond thee are those who first came forth from the space and have, in the passage through time-space, gained ability to use laws of the greater that are far beyond the conception of man. Nothing there is that is really below thee, but only a different operation of law. Look thee above, or look thee below, the same shall ye find, for all is but part of the oneness that is at the source of the law. The consciousness below thee is part of thine own, as we are a part of thine. Ye, as a child, had not the knowledge that came to ye when ye became a man. Compare ye the cycles to man in his journey from birth unto death, and see in the cycle below thee the child with the knowledge he has. And see ye yourself as the child grown older, advancing in knowledge as time passes on. See ye, we also, the child grown to manhood, with the knowledge and wisdom that came with the years. So also, O Thoth, are the cycles of consciousness, children in different stages of growth, yet all from the one source, the wisdom, and all to the wisdom returning again. Ceased then he from speaking, and sat in the silence that comes to the Lord's, then again spake he unto me, saying, O Thoth, long have we sat in Amenti, guarding the flame of life in the halls. Yet no, we are still part of our cycles, with our vision reaching unto them and beyond. I know we that of all nothing else matters, excepting the growth we can gain with our soul. Know we the flesh is fleeting. The things men count great are nothing to us, the things we seek are not of the body, but are only the perfected state of the soul. When ye as men can learn that nothing but progress of soul can count in the end, then truly ye are free from all bondage, free to work 
in a harmony of law. No, O oh man, ye should aim at perfection, for only thus can ye attain to the goal. Though ye should know that nothing is perfect, yet it should be thy aim and thy goal. Ceased again the voice of the nine, and into my consciousness the words had sunk. Now seek I ever more wisdom, that I may be perfect in law with the all. Soon go I down to the halls of Amenti, to live beneath the cold flower of life. Ye whom I have taught shall never more see me, yet live I forever in the wisdom I taught. All that man is, is because of his wisdom. All that he shall be is the result of his cause. List ye now to my voice, and become greater than common man. Lift thine eyes upward, let light fill thy being. Be thou ever children of light. Only by effort shall ye grow upward, O the plain where light is the all of the all. Be ye the master of all that surrounds thee. Never be mastered by the effects of thy life. Create then ever more perfect causes, and in time shalt thou be a son of the light. Free, let thine soul soar ever upward, free from the bondage and fetters of night. Lift thine eyes to the sun in the sky space, for thee let it be a symbol of life. Know that thou art the greater light, perfect in thine own sphere, when thou art free. Look not ever into the blackness, lift up thine eyes to the space above. Free, let thine light flame upward, and shalt thou be a child of light. Tablet 12 The Law of Cause and Effect And the Key of Prophecy Listen ye, O man, to the words of my wisdom. Listen to the voice of Thoth the Atlantean. Conquered have I the law of time-space. Knowledge have I gained of the future of time. Know I that man in his movement through space-time shall ever be one with the all. Know ye, O man, that all of the future is an open book to him who can read. All effect shall bring forth its causes, as all effects grew from the first cause. Know ye the future is not fixed or stable, but varies as cause brings forth an effect. Look in the cause thou shalt bring into being, and surely thou shalt see that all is effect. So, O man, be sure the effects that ye bring forth are ever causes of more perfect effects. Know ye the future is never in fixation, but follows man's free will as it moves, through the movements of time-space, toward the goal where a new time begins. Man can only read the future through the causes that bring the effects. Seek ye within the causation, and surely ye shall find the effects. Listen ye, O man, while I speak of the future, speak of the effect that follows the cause. Know ye that man in his journey, lightward, is ever seeking escape from the night that surrounds him, like the shadows that surround the stars in the sky, and like the stars in the sky space, he too shall shine from the shadows of night. Ever his destiny shall lead him onward until he is one with the light. I, though his way lies midst the shadows, ever before him glows the great light. Dark, though the way be yet shall he conquer, the shadows that flow around him like night. Far in the future I see man as light-born, free from the darkness that fetters the soul, living in light without the bounds of the darkness, to cover the light that is the light of their soul. Know ye, O man, before ye attain this, that many the dark shadows shall fall on your light, striving to quench with the shadows of darkness the light of the soul that strives to be free. Great is the struggle between light and darkness, age old and yet ever new. Yet know in a time far in the future, light shall be all and darkness shall fall. Listen, ye, O man, to my words of wisdom. Prepare, and ye shall not bind your light. 
Man has risen and man has fallen, as ever new waves of consciousness flow from the great abyss below us toward the sun of their goal. Ye, my children, have risen from a state that was little above the beast, until now of all men ye are greatest. Yet before thee were others greater than thee, yet tell I thee as before, thee others have fallen so also shall ye come to an end. And upon the land where ye dwell now, barbarians shall dwell and in turn rise to light. Forgotten shall be the ancient wisdom, yet ever shall live through hidden from men. I, in the land thou callst Chem, races shall rise and races shall fall. Forgotten shalt thou be of the children of men, yet thou shalt have moved to a star space, beyond this leaving behind, this place where thou hast dwelt. The soul of man moves ever onward, bound not by any one star, but ever moving to the great goal before him, where he is dissolved in the light of the all. Know ye that ye shall ever go onward, moved by the law of cause and effect, until in the end both become one. I, man, after ye have gone, others shall move in the places ye lived. Knowledge and wisdom shall all be forgotten, and only a memory of God's shall survive. And only a memory of God's shall survive. As I to thee am a God by my knowledge, so ye too shall be gods of the future, because of your knowledge far above theirs. Yet know ye that all through the ages Man shall have access to law when he will. Ages to come shall see revival of wisdom to those who shall inherit thy place in this star. They shall in turn come into wisdom and learn to banish the darkness by light. Yet greatly must they strive through the ages and bring unto themselves the freedom of light. Then shall there come unto man the great warfare that shall make the earth tremble and shake in its course. I then shall the dark brothers open the warfare between light and the night, when man again shall conquer the ocean and fly in the air on wings like birds. When he has learned to harness the lightning, then shall the time of warfare begin. Great shall the battle be twixt the forces, great the warfare of darkness and light. Nation shall rise against nation, using the dark forces to shatter the earth. Weapons of force shall wipe out the earth man, until half of the races of men shall be gone. Then shall come forth the sons of the morning, and give their edict to the children of men, saying, O men, cease from thy striving against thy brother. Only thus can ye come to the light, Cease from thy unbelief, O my brother, and follow the path, and know ye are right. Then shall men cease from their striving, brother against brother, and father against son. Then shall the ancient home of my people rise from its place beneath the dark ocean waves. Then shall the age of light be unfolded, with all men seeking the light of the goal. Then shall the brothers of light rule the people. Banished shall be the darkness of night. I, the children of men, shall progress onward and upward to the great goal. Children of light shall they become. Flame of the flame shall their souls ever be. Knowledge and wisdom shall be man's in the great age, for he shall approach the eternal flame, the source of all wisdom, the place of beginning, that is yet one with the end of all things. I, in a time that is yet unborn, and shall be one, and one shall be all. Man, a perfect flame of this cosmos, shall move forward to a place in the stars. I, shall move even from out of this space-time, into another beyond the stars. Long have ye listened to me, O my children, long have ye listened to the wisdom of Thoth. Now I depart from ye into darkness, now I go to the halls of Amenti, there to dwell in the future when light 
shall come again to man. Yet know ye, my spirit shall ever be with thee, guiding thy feet in the pathway of light. Guard ye the secrets I leave with thee, and surely my spirit will guard thee through life. Keep thine eyes ever on the pathway to wisdom. Keep the light as thy goal evermore. Fetter not thy soul in bondage of darkness. Free let it wing in its flight to the stars. Now I depart thee to dwell in Amenti. Be thou my children in this life and the next. The time will come when ye too shall be deathless, living from age to age a light among men. Guard ye the entrance to the halls of Amenti. Guard ye the secrets I have hidden among ye. Let not the wisdom be cast to barbarians. Secret shall thou keep it for those who seek light. Now depart I, receive thou my blessing. Take thou my way and follow the light. Blend thou thy soul in the great essence. One with the great light let thy consciousness be. Call thou on me when thou dost need me. Use my name three times in a row. Chekatet, a relic, full malities. Tablet 13, The Keys of Life and Death Listen ye, O man, hear ye the wisdom, hear ye the word that shall fill thee with life, hear ye the word that shall banish the darkness, hear ye the voice that shall banish the night. Mystery and wisdom have I brought to my children, knowledge and power descended from old. Know ye not that all shall be opened, when ye shall find the oneness of all? One shall be with the masters of mystery, conquerors of death and masters of life. I, ye shall learn of the flower of Amenti, the blossom of life that shines in the halls. In spirit shall ye reach that halls of Amenti, and bring back the wisdom that liveth in light. Know ye the gateway to power is secret. Know ye the gateway to life is through death. I, through death, but not as ye know death, but a death that is life, and is fire, and is light. Desireth thou to know the deep, hidden secret? Look in thy heart where the knowledge is bound. Know that in thee the secret is hidden the source of all life and the source of all death. Listen ye, O man, while I tell the secret, reveal unto thee the secret of old. Deep in earth's heart lies the flower, the source of the spirit that binds all in its form. Or know ye that earth is living in body, as thou art alive in thine own formed form. The flower of life is as thine own place of spirit, and streams through the earth as thine flows through thy form. Giving of life to the earth and its children, renewing the spirit from form unto form. This is the spirit that is form of thy body, shaping and molding into its form. Know ye, O man, that thy form is dual, balanced in polarity, while formed in its form. Know that when fast on thee death approaches, it is only because thy balance is shaken. It is only because one pole has been lost. Know that the secret of life in Amenti is the secret of restoring the balance of poles. All that exists from form and is living because of the spirit of life in its poles See ye not that in earth's heart is the balance of all things that exist, and have being on its face? The source of thy spirit is drawn from the earth's heart, for in thy form thou art one with the earth. When thou hast learned to hold thine own balance, then shalt thou draw on the balance of earth. Exist then shalt thou while earth is existing, changing in form, only when earth too shalt change. Tasting not of death, but one with this planet, holding thy form till all pass away. Listen ye, O man, whilst I give the secret, so that ye too shall taste not of change. 
one hour each day shalt thou lie with thine head pointed to the place of the positive pole, north. One hour each day shalt thy head be pointed to the place of the negative pole, south. Whilst thy head is placed to the northward, hold thy consciousness from the chest to the head, and when thy head is placed southward, hold thy thought from chest to the feet. Hold thou in balance once in each seven, and thy balance will retain the whole of its strength. I, if thou be old, thy body will freshen, and thy strength will become as a youth's. This is the secret known to the masters, of which they hold off the fingers of death. Neglect not to follow the path I have shown, for when thou hast passed beyond stars to a hundred, to neglect it will mean the coming of death. Hear ye my words and follow the pathway, Keep thou thy balance and live on in life. Hear ye, O man, and listen to my voice. Listen to the wisdom that gives thee of death. When at the end of thy work appointed, thou may desire to pass from this life. Pass to the plain where the sons of the morning live and have being as children of light. Pass without pain and pass without sorrow into the plain where is eternal light. First lie at rest with thine head to the eastward. Fold thou thy hands at the source of thy life. Solar Plexus Place thou thy consciousness in the life seat. Whirl it and divide it to north and to south. Send thou the one out toward the northward. Send thou the other out to the south. Relax thou their hold upon thy being. Forth from they form will thy silver spark fly, upward and onward, to the sun of the morning, blending with light at one with its source. There it shall flame till desire shall be created, then shall return to a place in a form. Know ye, O men, that thus pass the great souls, changing at will from life unto life. Thus ever passes the avatar, willing his death as he wills his own life. Listen ye, O man, drink of my wisdom, learn ye the secret that is master of time. Learn ye how those ye call masters are able to remember the lives of the past. Great is the secret, yet easy to master, giving to thee the mastery of time. When upon thee death fast approaches, fear not, but know ye are the master of death. Relax thy body, resist not with tension. Place in thy heart the flame of thy soul. Swiftly then sweep it to the seat of the triangle. Hold for a moment, then move to the goal. This thy goal is the place between thine eyebrows, the place where the memory of life must hold sway. Hold thou thy flame here in thy brain seat until the fingers of death grasp thy soul. Then as thou pass through the state of transition, surely the memories of life shall pass too. Then shalt the past be as one with the present, then shall the memory of all be retained. Free shalt thou be from all retrogression, the things of the past shall live in today. Tablet 14 Supplementary Atlantis Listen ye, O man, to the deep hidden wisdom, lost to the world since the time of the dwellers, lost and forgotten by men of this age. Know ye this earth is but a portal, guarded by powers unknown to man. Yet the dark lords hide the entrance that leads to the heaven-born land. Know ye the way to the sphere of Arulu, is guarded by barriers opened only to light-born man. Upon earth I am the holder of the keys to the gates of the sacred land. Command I by the powers beyond me to leave the keys to the world of man. Before I depart, I give ye the secrets of how ye may rise from the bondage of darkness. Cast off the fetters of flesh that have bound ye. Rise from the darkness into the light. Know ye the soul must be cleansed of its darkness. Ere ye may enter the portals of light. 
Thus I established among ye the mysteries, so that the secrets may always be found. I, though man may fall into darkness, always the light will shine as a guide. Hidden in darkness, veiled in symbols, always the way to the portal will be found. Man in the future will deny the mysteries, but always the way the seeker will find. Now I command ye to maintain my secrets, giving only to those ye have tested, so that the power may not be corrupted, so that the power of truth may prevail. Listen ye now to the unveiling of mystery, list to the symbols of mystery I give. Make of it a religion, for only thus will its essence remain. Regions there are two between this life and the Great One, traveled by the souls who depart from this earth. Duat, the home of the powers of illusion, Seket, Hetzbet, the house of the gods. Osiris, the symbol of the guard of the portal, who turns back the souls of unworthy men. Beyond lies the sphere of the heaven-born powers, Arulu, the land where the Great Ones have passed. There, when my work among men has been finished, will I join the Great Ones of my ancient home. Seven are the mansions of the House of the Mighty. Three guards the portal of each house from the darkness. Fifteen the ways that lead to Duat. Twelve are the houses of the Lords of Illusions, facing four ways, each of them different. Forty and two are the great powers, judging the dead who seek for the portal. Four are the sons of Horus, two are the guards of east and west of Isis, the mother who pleads for her children, queen of the moon, reflecting the sun. Ba is the essence living forever, Ka is the shadow that man knows as life. Ba cometh not until Ka is incarnate. These are mysteries to preserve through the ages. Keys are they of life and death. Hear ye now the mystery of mysteries. Learn of the circle, beginningless and endless, the form of he who is one and in all. Listen and hear it. Go forth and apply it. Thus will ye travel the way that I go. Mystery in mystery, yet clear to the light-born the secret of all I now will reveal. I will declare a secret to the initiated, but let the door be wholly shut against the profane. Three is the mystery come from the Great One. Here, and light on thee will dawn. In the primeval dwell three unities. Other than these none can exist. These are the equilibrium, source of creation, one God, one truth, one point of freedom. Three come forth from the three of the balance, all life, all good, all power. Three are the qualities of God in his light home, infinite power, infinite wisdom, infinite love. Three are the powers given to the masters to transmute evil, assist good, use discrimination. Three are the things inevitable for God to perform, manifest power, wisdom, and love. Three are the powers creating all things, divine love possessed of perfect knowledge, divine wisdom knowing all possible means, divine power possessed by the joint will of divine love and wisdom. Three are the circles, states of existence, the circle of light where dwells nothing but God, and only God can traverse it, the circle of chaos where all things by nature arise from death the circle of awareness where all things spring from life. All things animate are of three states of existence, chaos or death, liberty in humanity, and felicity of heaven. Three necessities control all things, beginning in the great deep, the circle of chaos, plentitude in heaven. Three are the paths of the soul, man, liberty, light. Three are the hindrances, Lack of endeavor to obtain knowledge, non-attachment to God, attachment to evil. In man, the three are manifest. Three are the kings of power within. Three are the chambers of the mysteries, found yet not in the body of man. Hear ye now of he who is liberated, freed from the bondage of life into light, 
knowing the source of all worlds, shall be open. I, even the gates of Arulu, shall not be barred. Yet heed, O man, who wouldst enter heaven, if ye be not worthy, better it be to fall into the fire. Know ye the celestials pass through the pure flame. At every revolution of the heavens they bathe in the fountains of light. Listen ye, O man, to this mystery. Long in the past before ye were man-born, I dwelled in ancient Atlantis. There in the temple I drank of the wisdom, poured as a fountain of light from the dweller. Give the key to ascend to the presence of light in the great world. Stood I before the Holy One enthroned in the flower of fire. Veiled was he by the lightnings of darkness, else my soul by the glory have been shattered. Forth from the feet of his throne, like the diamond, rolled forth four rivers of flame from his footstool, rolled through the channels of clouds to the man-world. Filled was the hall with spirits of heaven, wonder of wonders was the starry palace. Above the sky, like a rainbow of fire and sunlight, were formed the spirits. Sang they the glories of the Holy One. Then, from the midst of the fire, came a voice. Behold, the glory of the first cause. I beheld that light, high above all darkness, reflected in my own being. I attained, as it were, to the God of all gods, the Spirit Son, the Sovereign of the Sun Spheres. There is one, even the first, who hath no beginning, who hath no end, who hath made all things, who govern all, who is good, who is just, who illumines, who sustains. Then from the throne there poured a great radiance, surrounding and lifting my soul by its power. Swiftly I moved through the spaces of heaven, shown was I the mystery of mysteries, shown the secret heart of the cosmos. Carried was I to the land of Arulu, stood before the lords in their houses, opened they the doorway so I might glimpse the primeval chaos, shuddered my soul to the vision of horror, shrank back my soul from the ocean of darkness, then saw I the need for the barriers, saw the need for the lords of Arulu. Only they with their infinite balance could stand in the way of the inpouring chaos, only they could guard God's creation. Then did I pass around the circle of eight, saw all the souls who had conquered the darkness, saw the splendor of light where they dwelled. Longed I to take my place in their circle, but longed I also for the way I had chosen, when I stood in the halls of Amenti and made my choice to the work I would do. Passed I from the halls of Arulu, down to the earth space where my body lay, Arose I from the earth where I rested, stood I before the dweller, gave my pledge to renounce my great right until my work on earth was completed, until the age of darkness be past. Listen ye, O man, to the words I shall give ye. In them shall ye find the essence of life. Before I return to the halls of Amenti, taught shall ye be the secrets of secrets, how ye too may arise to the light. Preserve them and guard them, hide them in symbols, so the profane will laugh and renounce. In every land form ye the mysteries, make the way hard for the seeker to tread. Thus will the weak and the wavering be rejected, thus will the secrets be hidden and guarded, held till the time when the wheel shall be turned. Through the dark ages waiting and watching, my spirit shall remain in the deep hidden land. When one has passed all the trials of the outer, summon ye me by the key that ye hold. Then will I, the initiator, answer, come from the halls of the gods in Amenti. Then will I receive the initiate, give him the words of power. Hark ye, remember these words of warning. Bring not to me one lacking in wisdom, impure in heart, or weak in his purpose, else I will withdraw from ye your power to summon me from the place of my sleeping. Now go ye forth and summon thy brothers, so that I may impart the wisdom 
to light thy path when my presence is gone. Come to the chamber beneath my temple, eat not food until three days are past. There will I give thee essence of wisdom, so that with power ye may shine amongst men. There will I give unto thee the secrets, so that ye too may arise to the heavens, God-men in truth, and in essence ye be. Depart now, and leave me while I summon those ye know of, but as yet know not. Tablet 15 Supplementary Secret of Secrets Now ye assemble, my children, waiting to hear the secret of secrets, which shall give ye power to unfold the God-man, give ye the way to eternal life. Plainly shall I speak of the unveiled mysteries, no dark sayings shall I give unto thee. Open thy ears now, my children, hear and obey the words that I give. First I shall speak of the fetters of darkness, which bind ye in chains to the spheres of the earth. Darkness and light are both of one nature, different only in seeming, for each arose from the source of all. Darkness is disorder, light is order. Darkness transmuted is light of the light. This, my children, your purpose in being, transmutation of dark to light. Hear ye now of the mystery of nature, the relations of life to the earth where it dwells. Know ye, Ye are threefold in nature, physical, astral, and mental in one. Three are the qualities of each of the natures, nine in all as above, so below. In the physical are these channels, the blood which moves in vertical motion, reacting on the heart to continue its beating. Magnetism, which moves through the nerve paths, carrier of energies to all cells and tissues. Akasa, which flows through the channels, subtle yet physical, completing the channels, each of the three attuned with each other, each affecting the life of the body. Form them the skeletal framework through which the subtle ether flows, in their mastery lies the secret of life in the body, relinquished only by will of the adept when his purpose in living is done. Three are the natures of the astral, mediator is between above and below, not of the physical, not of the spiritual, but able to move above and below. Three are the natures of mind, carrier it of the will of the Great One, arbitrator of cause and effect in thy life. Thus is formed the threefold being, directed from above by the power of four. Above and beyond man's threefold nature lies the realm of the spiritual self. Four is it in qualities, shining in each of the planes of existence, but thirteen in one, the mystical number. Based on the qualities of man are the brothers, each shall direct the unfoldment of being, each shall channels be of the Great One. On earth man is in bondage, bound by space and time to the earth plane. Encircling each planet, a wave of vibration binds him to his plane of unfoldment. Yet within man is the key to releasement. Within man may freedom be found. When ye have released the self from the body, rise to the outermost bounds of your earth plane. Speak ye the word, dor e lil la Then for a time your light will be lifted. Free may ye pass the barriers of space. For a time of half of the sun, six hours, Free may ye pass the barriers of earth plane. See ye and know those who are beyond thee. Yea, to the highest worlds may ye pass. See your own possible heights of unfoldment. Know all earthly futures of soul. Bound are ye in your body, but by the power ye may be free. This is the secret whereby bondage shall be replaced by freedom for thee. Calm let thy mind be, at rest be thy body. Conscious only of freedom from flesh, center thy being on the goal of thy longing. Think over and over that thou wouldst be free. Think of this word, la um i el genuver, and over in thy mind let it sound. 
Drift with the sound to the place of thy longing, free from the bondage of flesh by thy will. Hear ye while I give the greatest of secrets, how ye may enter the halls of Amenti. Enter the place of the immortals as I did, stand before the lords in their places, lie down in rest of thy body, calm thy mind so no thought disturbs thee. Pure must ye be in mind and in purpose, else only failure will come unto thee. Vision Amenti as I have told in my tablets, long with fullness of heart to be there. Stand before the lords in thy mind's eye, pronounce the words of power I give, mentally. Mekut el Shab el Hel Shur ben el Zabrut zin Ephraim Quar el. Relax thy mind and thy body, then be sure your soul will be called. Now give I the key to Shambhala, the place where my brothers live in the darkness, darkness but filled with light of the sun, darkness of earth but light of the spirit, guides for ye when my day is done. Leave thou thy body as I have taught thee, pass to the barriers of the deep, hidden place, stand before the gates and their guardians, Command thy entrance by these words. I am the light, in me is no darkness, free am I of the bondage of night. Open thou the way of the twelve and the one, so I may pass to the realm of wisdom. When they refuse thee, as surely they will, command them to open by these words of power. I am the light, for me are no barriers. Open, I command, by the secret of secrets. Edom el Ahim Sabrat Zur Adom. Then, if thy words have been truth of the highest, open for thee the barriers will fall. Now I leave thee, my children. Own, yet up, to the halls shall I go. Win ye the way to me, my children. Truly, my brothers, shall ye become. Thus finish I my writings. Keys let them be to those who come after, but only to those who seek my wisdom. For only for these am I the key and the way.